and I went to bed early last night, you know, as I always do. Whenever I go on tour with Verzi and Bartnick, I think all of us, like, for the next three days have to, like, dry out and try to get about, oh, about 14 hours sleep. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm off the booze. I'm off the cigars. You know, the usual fucking thing. I'm all over the goddamn place. And, um, oh, fuck. You know what somebody told me yesterday? Here's a new thing. All right? How fucking in this fucking world that just keeps get, getting more and more creepy. You know, that whole big brother thing, but blah, 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 blah. And then people are saying, well, big brother, it turns out it's actually us. Um, and it is. It is because we, we just keep going along with this shit. Listen, here's the deal. Bill, just tell the fucking story before you go on your stupid little rant here. All right. So a buddy of mine tells me the other day, right, he, uh, that a friend of his came over to do some work on his house because uh, if you own a house, you're constantly trying to fix it so it doesn't fall down. That's what they don't tell you. You know, when they show the commercial and the real estate commercials, you know, a white picket fence, golden retriever. Your wife had six kids and she's still hot, right? Isn't that the other song goes? Anyways, and they're all running around their, their uh, you know, ridiculously green front yard playing Frisbee. You know, the dog's not trying to eat anybody. You know, the wife's laughing. The kids are all good looking, right? Everything's fine, right? Nobody has a lisp. Nobody has, you know, fucking jealousy issues, you know. Guy doesn't have dad bod. It's just basically crushing it. Like, and you just look at it and you're like, you know what? If I, if I, you know, if I buy a house, you know, I know I'm not going to look like that, but is that the mood I'm going to be in? It's like a drug, right? So anyways, he fucking, um, he fucking has this guy, his buddy come over to do some work. So he goes to pay him and is it all good guys do? Ah, you don't need to pay me. You don't need to pay me. And he's like, no, come on. I want to pay it. Nah, I'll tell you, I'm not going to accept it. Just take the fucking money, right? They had to do a sketch like that with two polite friends and it ends up in a knife fight. And one person finally kills the guy and then fucking stuffs the money in his mouth. Should they do a sketch like that? I think they should. Um, Anyway, so he goes, so finally the guy goes, you don't have to pay me. Just get me a case of beer. So the guy goes, fine. So the closest place that had a little bit of liquor was CVS. So he goes down to CVS. He buys the fucking case of beer. And the lady behind the lady behind the counter goes, do you have an ID? And he's looking at her like, bitch, I'm 50. But he goes, do you? really think I, you know, you don't think I'm of age? She goes, no, I need to swipe your license. And she he goes, for what? She goes, oh, um, basically for health insurance purposes. They record, you know, if you drink or not. And if you drink, your premium goes up because you're a drinker. Now, what the fuck does CDS give a shit about ratting everybody out who's a fucking booze face out there, right? Because you know what it is? The money that they're going to fucking be able to, to, to knock up, you know, on your premium to pump it up. CVS gets a, gets a little kickback. That's how it fucking works. It's like when I drive you to fucking Amazon.com, right? If you go through my website, they give me a little, hey, thanks for sending some business our way. Break you off a couple of honeys, right? But I'm not costing you any more money. I'm the hero with this. I don't cost you any more money, whether you go directly to Amazon, if you go through my website. It doesn't make any difference to me. And I'm also not ratting you out. What I'm trying to say here is I am a way better person than CVS. No, I'm fucking with you. Look, we're all trying to make money out here, but that's, that's really, it's fucking ridiculous. I actually, I was trying to look at it from the insurance company side of it, because you know goddamn well everybody goes in there and lies. Do you smoke? No. Do you drink? No, I mean, maybe I'll have a beer. I don't know. On the 4th of July to support the troops. Do you uh, engage in any uh, drug activity? Well, I mean, I mean, food's a drug, so technically, yes. But I mean, that other's no, no, I wouldn't. Do you have unprotected sex with prostitutes? Listen, I, I got a phone call. Can I can I take this, you know? You know, you know the deal. You lie your fucking ass off. You're going to get life insurance. You lie your fucking ass off. Right. So on one side, I actually have empathy for insurance companies because I understand that aspect of it, provided they ever fucking paid out any goddamn money remotely like they said they were going to. 
you know the deal. You pay for insurance. They say you're covered. You say to them, hey, if this happens, am I going to be covered? Hey, if I, I, I got the, uh, the old stub the toe insurance. So if I wake up in the morning, I stub my toe, okay? I'm a man. I can take it. But if I break my fucking toe, okay? And, you know, my job is to skip on stage every night. If I have to take a night off, can you, can you kick me, you know, the fucking $25 feature spot money? Can you kick that to me? They're like, absolutely. I go, all right. So if I break my toe, stub my toe in my house, I'm covered. Absolutely, you're covered, right? Then what happens? You stub your toe, you break it, you fucking call them up. They're like, okay, I got to send it through the uh, you're not getting paid quadrant, uh, quadrant of the fucking insurance company. Then they come back, and what do they do? They'll give you like fucking 13 bucks instead of the 25 they owed you. Now, I know 13 between 25 doesn't seem like a lot of money, right? But you just ratchet that up there, right? What if they owed you 250 and they only gave you 130? What if they owed you 25 grand and they only gave you fucking six? That's what the fuck they do. They are in the business of taking your fucking money and buying themselves a yacht and fucking banging Victoria's Secret models in the ass while uh, looking at the next year's model of fucking uh, uh, yachts. That's, that's what they're in the business of. They are not in the business of fucking helping people. They're in the business of taking your money, telling you that you're going to be covered. And then when you go, dude, what the fuck? Right? They go, yeah, go fuck yourself because we got more money. Take it or leave it, right? And what should happen is like, you know, when, uh, you remember the Mighty Heroes? When they would send out that little signal and they'd all fucking, t- Diaper Man and Strong Man, they'd all turn into something? Or was it Batman? I don't fucking remember what. Everybody who's insured by that company should go at those cunts and be like, dude, what the fuck? I thought you said this guy was covered. This is what you're doing to him. You're going to do it to all of us, right? I'm going back to the Sally Field thing. You know what the problem is? Is nobody likes their neighbor. You know, you look across at him, you look at the car he's driving, you look at his wife. You either don't understand what he bought or you want it. There's never a middle ground like, yeah, you know, I'm pretty much on par with this guy and I can, my ego can handle living across from him. You're either going to resent him or not understand him. So then when he gets fucked out of money, he's telling you the story. You're sitting there nodding your head, acting like you don't like it. But you hate to admit it. There's a part of your soul that's getting filled up, isn't it? Admit it. You don't like your neighbors, Right. If it really came down to it, don't you want a house as big as your house and your neighbors? Wouldn't it be great if they just weren't there anymore? And somehow there was, wasn't any like forensics and they could figure out that you uh, hastened his demise and took over his house. Just added a fucking hallway between your house and his, right? And then the whole other house is yours, right? So when your wife and kids are driving you nuts, you just say, listen, daddy's going over to his other life. I'll be back when I can deal with you. And everybody just looks at you like those, that family in that real estate commercial, just smiling and waving, being like, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. All right? Then you go in there, right? It's anything you want. You got booze. You got cigars. You know? You got a masseuse slash a fucking whore. They ought to have that. The timeout room for a married guy, you know? <laughs> And I know what you ladies are thinking. Well, why don't they have a timeout room for women? And you know what I say? Well, why don't you come up with it? The world doesn't owe you a round of drinks, okay? Now, God damn it, you got that multitasking brain. Why don't you sit down with a couple other broads? What would be in your room? You know, a bunch of shit that makes you live longer. See, if you notice with the guy, everything I said would slowly fucking kill me. The bows, the cigars, the whores, all of it. Just It just eats away at your soul and your fucking liver. Right. Women would go in there. The first one of the first things they would probably want is like the most beautiful fucking tub they ever could find. So they could take a nice fucking bath, you know, with their crazy little fucking soaps. Right. Have a whole spa day and they'd have a friend that they could sit down and get all of that resentment out of their heart with someone who can actually listen to it. They download all of that shit. They just totally clean up their soul. Before they go into the next room and get fucking banged by Brad Pitt. You know, whoever the fucking Jake Gyllenhaal guy is nowadays. Who is it? Is it Justin Bieber? Hasn't he become a man yet? He's in his 20s, right? He's riding the wave out of teen idledom. Slowly becoming a man, right? As long as he doesn't remake Blue Lagoon, I think that kid's going to be all right.